When we humans think about a trip to Mars, very often what we think about is staying there. Unlike the moon, which only took a couple of guys a couple of days, a Mars mission will take a minimum of 21 months. That's 21 months of humans doing all the things humans do, which is why it's time we had a serious talk about sex in space. Given that there have been several manned space missions, I can't help but be curious about whether or not any astronauts have had sex in space. And come on, I'm not alone on that, right? Sexuality is intrinsic to human nature and inevitably factors into space missions. But while space science is progressing, our understanding of sex in space is still basic. We need to know more about sexuality in space if we are serious about long-duration space flights. Sexuality is very possibly going to be a part of that, said Paul Root Wolpe, who spent 15 years as a senior bioethicist at NASA. Sex in space is definitely a curious and intriguing question. Pornhub has raised more than $230,000 in a stunt crowdfunding drive to produce the world's first sex tape in space. It is far from its $3.4 million goal but still impressive and yet the publicity-loving stunt network's plan may have more fundamental problems than money. Gravity is pretty essential for sex. Without it things quickly get complicated. Does sex in space matter? Is it worth asking a question? Addressing sexuality in space isn't just important because it's what's on everyone's mind. When asked whether sexuality is part of an astronaut's training, Matthias Maurer from NASA replied, no, but maybe it should be. If we look at sexual health as a core component of health, it's important to understand the conditions we are putting individuals in, said by Sarah Lynn Mark former senior medical advisor to NASA. Sex and masturbation are linked to physical and mental health that doesn't change in space. Ejaculation is essential for men to avoid the risk of bacteria building up in their prostate, and orgasms have been shown to relieve stress and anxiety as well as improve sleep quality, which likely helps during a high-pressure space mission. Has it already happened? We can only speculate, but it seems likely that sex in space has already happened. There are two space missions that jump out as candidates for the first cosmic coitus. In 1982, Russian cosmonaut Svetlana Savitskaya, the second ever woman in space, joined the Soyuz T-7 space mission for eight days. Two male colleagues were already on board when she arrived, making it the first co-ed space mission. In his book, A Hell Ride Through Time and Space, German astronaut Ulrich Walter notes that, according to the team's doctor, Oleg Georgievich Gazenko, the flight was planned with a sexual encounter in mind. The second mission in question took place in 1992, when NASA's Space Shuttle Endeavour was launched with a married couple on board. Mark Lee and Jan Davis, both astronauts, met at NASA. They married in secret a year before liftoff. Their joint flight to space was practically their honeymoon. Though now divorced, both of them remain silent about it. How is it different from here on Earth? So, we can assume that sex in space is a reality. But how is it different from ours on Earth? Let's start with the basics, sex drive. The little publicly available information that we have indicates that being in space leads to reduced libido, at least at first. That's because microgravity, the weightlessness astronauts experience in space, causes hormonal changes, like decreases in estrogen. Low estrogen levels have been linked to a drop in sex drive. Unfortunately, most of what we know about hormones in space comes only from tests on men. That's because only 11.5% of astronauts are female, and the relatively few women who have been to space opted to go on birth control beforehand to avoid menstruation. This makes it tricky to disentangle artificial hormonal changes from those caused by spaceflight. Another factor in cosmic sex drive is a change in astronauts' internal clock. When you're going around the planet right now, every 90 minutes, your circadian rhythms are altered and that alters everything, including your sex hormones and probably your libido, said Sarah Lynn Mark. The science also matches astronaut Walter's on-site experience. In his book, he writes that, during his short 10-day stay in space, he had no libido. But there's hope, according to Walter, astronaut sex drive does readjust after a few weeks in space. What are the challenges we are facing to have sex in space? While our knowledge of sex drive is still fuzzy, we have a much clearer picture on whether humans can get physically aroused in space. Let's start with simple physiology. Blood flow to the genital region is pivotal for both men and women in sexual intercourse but in a zero-gravity environment, it tends to rise to your head and chest. That's not good news for male or female arousal. Though the Kinsey report cites anecdotal claims of space erections, it cannot confidently say to their quality. Without gravity, a fornicating couple would also likely have trouble staying intertwined, plus muscles become weaker over time in space. So any kind of unusual stressful activity would likely tire out participants very quickly. 
the stress of these two factors would likely exacerbate each other. Besides, all the exertion is likely to stir up even more sweat than the earthbound act. Sweat at zero G is a decidedly nasty affair. It clings to the body and builds up in layers without any gravity to run it off. Vaginal moisture is likely to build up the same way. Of course astronauts might now want to have sex in space in the first place. When asked whether space boners are viable, Mark gave a clear answer, yes, microgravity does not affect that path. For women, arousal in space is possible as well, but getting wet feels physically different than on planet Earth. In zero gravity, liquids collect at their point of origin, meaning they form a blob at the spot where they are secreted, instead of flowing freely similar to what we discussed about sweat before. So is there any way out for astronauts? So much for the biological basics. Now we are left with speculating about the act itself. One thing is certain, sex in space is a far more exhausting endeavor than here on Earth. In zero gravity, Newton's third law, which states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, makes thrusting against each other a real challenge. We don't realize how much gravity assists us in the act of intercourse, said Wolpe. Sex involves pressure. In space, without any counterforce, you end up constantly pushing your partner away from you. But where there's a will, there's a way. In an interview with German public broadcaster, Walter suggested that astronauts could adopt a method employed by dolphins in the ocean, where a third party holds the other two together to prevent them from drifting. Wolpe has another idea, everything on the walls of the space station is covered in Velcro, so you could take advantage of that by Velcroing one partner to the wall. You have to get creative in this space. Definitely, astronauts need creativity for this possibility. Studies do suggest that male travelers tend to see a decrease in testosterone and there's the ethically tangled possibility of a space pregnancy. So for now, enjoy your 250-mile high club jokes and give to your crowdfunding campaigns if any of the 540-odd people who have been to space have had sex there, they aren't talking. Suggest interesting topics you want to see on your channel. Till then stay curious.